Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina's Craft. Welcome to this first video of the embroidery series. So as you can see, I prepared a little bit my cover. I'm doing a needle book all done with fabric. Today I'm going to show you how to do the French knot and we're going to do little French knots to replace those flowers in her hair. So you need a needle, a needle that is pointy and uh, you need some threads, the embroidery threads that you find in all the big stores. Those threads comes with six threads in it. So because we want to work on small flowers, we're going to only use two out of the six threads. So you need to divide and just keep two out of the six threads. Most of the time I work with three threads, but this time the flowers are really so tiny that I'm going to work with two, but I never work with more than three threads. I am working on a sewing project mat, which is kind of a big felt and it's made exactly to pin some needles in, but you can work on your side on a little cushion, on anything that you could pin your needle in. Doesn't really matter what it is or how soft it is or hard it is, as long as you can pin easily your needle. I did a knot at the end of my thread so it doesn't pass through the fabric. Now I'm doing my first flower. I always verify that I'm at the end of my thread so I don't have any loose thread at the back of my fabric because sometimes it happens and you, you just don't realize it so it's always good to watch. Now look at the process. You pull the thread you turn around your needle two or three times and you pin right beside where your thread was coming out from the fabric. If you go back into the same hole, you're gonna lose the thread. So you need to be a little bit beside. And then when I'm gonna do my second knot, just look carefully how I hold the thread with my left end. I am right-ended, so that would be the opposite if you're left-ended. So you have to always hold the thread with, your, with the end where you don't have the needle. You see, I'm always keeping attention on my thread, always, always. And then when I pull the thread, I just release at the last second for the knot to form completely. If you do not follow that process, your thread will do knots before the fabric and then you have to scratch and redo it. So you see, I'm keeping attention on the thread. I pin, then I grab the fabric with the threads, hold it in my fingers, between my fingers, and then I release at the last second. So look at this one. I can replace the fabric <laughs> just to make sure at some point that it goes at the good place. And I put a tension, I keep the tension, I pin, I keep the tension again between my finger and the fabric, I pull and then I release at the last second. So this is why you need to work on a cushion or a kind of a pillow that felt where you can pin your needle because when I pin the needle, I need my two hands being free. The left side is holding the thread, the tension, grabbing all the fabric together and the thread to keep the tension. And my right hand is uh, moving the needle actually. So you really need your two hands for this process and you need to pin the needle somewhere so this is where you need the little caution or felt. So again let, let's do another one together. So you're gonna see I am pulling the thread, turn around the needle, pin, 
keeping the tension and then I grab and I release at the last second. When you uh, turn the thread around the needle, it can be backward or upward, both works. I prefer backward because I feel I have a big, bigger control on my little knot and I find that if I go the other way, my knots are a little bit more loose in average. So the effect is different. You might want to try both and you pick whatever, which one you prefer. Now, what, why I would decide to turn one, two, three, four, five times around my needle is just because if I want a small little knot, like a little delicate flower, I would just do one or two rounds around the needle with the thread. If I want a bigger one, I can do three, four, five rounds around. So in this case, all those flowers are really, really tiny. They're really small. I don't want to be to get them big. So I'm doing one and two rounds around my needle with the thread and I think I did maybe two that were three rounds around the needle in the whole project. So uh, depending on the amount of threads that you kept two or three and depending on the the, um, the amount of turn that you're going to do around your needle if you do one two three four this will all impact the size of your French knot, the, the size of it at, at the end of the project. So you play with that. You play with having two or three treads in your needle and then you play with uh, turning your tread around the needle one, two, three, four times. My average is more two and three times in all of my projects. But the fact that you can tweak a little bit and play with that, doing one turn or three turns or two turns, it gives you the, the chance to have smaller flowers, medium flowers. I call them flowers because they make me think about flowers. And in this project, they are actually flowers. So, um, so yeah, this is how you make different sizes of flowers. It's by uh, doing more or less turn of the thread around your needle. When I'm done with the thread, I go at the back of the fabric and I do a little knot so it secures everything. Look at how cute it is. That picture of that cute little girl is now three-dimensional with the flowers and it makes a whole difference. Now, I wanted to do a little bit of leaves, not just the the roses, but I wanted to keep that project simple because we are just starting and we now know how to do French knots, but we don't know how to do leaves or other other kind of embroidery uh, stitches. So I took a green, it's a greenish grayish thread. It matches perfectly the picture. So what I did is I did little green French knots between the flowers and it, it's just adding a little detail and uh, they kind of act like leaves because of their color. So as you can see here, we have now pink and a green grayish uh, French knots there. So that's it for me for the little girl to have embroidery uh, knots on her. Um, but what I want to do is I want to add a little bit on the Paris 
label there. So I'm placing it where I want it to be because it might grab um, the, uh, the fabric of the little girl and the tool and the cheesecloth and the polka dot tool there that I've placed behind the little girl. So I'm grabbing all this together and now I'm going to do French knots of the same green that she has in her hair because it matches as you can see and by doing those French knots it will hold all those fabrics together without uh, showing the back of the French knots at the end because if I'm stitching all through my cover the that fabric that I'm folding into to create the cover of my journal if I'm doing my stitches all through that then the back of my stitches will show inside my journal inside the cover and I don't want that so I'm doing all my stitches on the fabric and then I can glue this little snippet on my cover or in this case I'm going to do an end stitch all around the little snippet to, um, to stitch it to my cover. When I do an assortment of French knots like that I don't really know where I'm going. Uh, I just go with the flow. I tend to group little knots together like doing triangles forms and uh, and then I go a little bit uh, on the right or the left and what I don't want is I don't want them to be aligned. I want them to be proportionally placed here and there all over my project. It's okay to have one or two that are a little bit further than the others. It kind of gives a character. Um, you actually want to have a group of three or five or seven. You don't want a pair number. You don't want two, four, six. More than seven, the number doesn't count anymore because your eyes are not really able to count them easily. So it kind of forgets about this detail. But if you're just doing a, a small amount of French knots, you want to have like three, five or seven of them or more than that. That's the rule of thumb. I will put some music for the remaining of the video. I am done with doing the um, French knots, but I need to attach the snippet to the cover, uh, stitch the laces, stitch the closure, the little ribbons to do the closure of the needle book. So you're going to see me doing the, the remaining of the cover. The cover will be completely done at the end of this video. And then in the next video, we're going to do the inside of the cover with another embroidery. So for the remaining of this video, it is kind of a slow stitching process video uh, with music. And I just hope you're going to enjoy. Otherwise, you just skip and wait for the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye bye.